and just allow them as God to be here in the house of God to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray you bless every home and every family. God that is represented here today. And Father, God that be ones that came our way, God, today that may be struggling with whatever issue it may be. God, pray, God, that you'd meet that need according to your riches and glory. And since, God, you own a cattle on a thousand hillside, Father, I know that you can meet that need. Father, now I pray, God, that you'd bless the preaching hour, the songs of Zion. Stir our soul, God, today, and we'd leave this place much differently, God, than the way we came. And well, Lord Jesus, we'll love you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray, and the people of God say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Dealing with 
uh, either as colds or sinuses, and uh, there's some folk that have the flu. Uh, certainly be praying for a lot of folk that are sick. Here's what I want you to do uh, today. We're going to uh, keep the um, uh, sharing of the germs and all that to a very minimum. And so I want you just to stand up uh, right there where you're at, uh, right there where you're at. And uh, she's going to come uh, play on the piano. I want to get all of our uh, folk that are helping us with music. Uh, we've got a couple songs that we want to do here in just a minute and uh, move on in the service. We're not going to attempt a choir uh, this morning, uh, but we are going to, uh, to worship. And I hope you didn't come uh, to church just to look at people. I hope you didn't come to church just to have a time where we just uh, come and go through and check off the boxes. I, I don't believe that God ever wanted us to go to church that way. To just go and say, well, I did my religious duty and I've done my thing. Now it's time to go and do something else and time to go and uh, move on and do something. Uh, and go, go to lunch or whatever. Nothing wrong with lunch. How many of you thank God for Sunday lunch? Amen. Uh, but I didn't come here uh, just so I could go to lunch. I came here to worship. Uh, let's uh, let's do that today. And uh, y'all join in with us as we worship the Lord uh, here this morning.
Uh, we will not have service here tonight. Uh, we will be here on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So after you finish eating your greens and your black-eyed peas and your hog jowl and all that stuff, and then you come on over here, and we're going to have a church in a little while. We're going to start off the year in the, in the Lord's house, and then we'll have a season of prayer, and I'll share with you uh, what the Lord puts in my heart uh, for that. Uh, again, thank you for coming. If you have your Bible this morning, <coughs> I'm going to do my best to preach to you and uh, give you what the Lord has for us. Look in uh, the book of Luke, uh, Luke chapter number two. I'm sure that it's working there. Luke chapter two. And uh, if you have that and you found that and you're able, uh, let's stand and we're going to honor the reading of the Word of God together. Uh, just read a few verses here and uh, we're going to, I, I'd intended on leaving my series last week, but uh, the Lord gave me something that kind of goes right along with that. And so Luke chapter 2 and verse number 15, uh, the Bible said, It came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing uh, which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20 said, And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. This is just an aside here. There's only one word that was ever recorded that Joseph, the, the, the earthly father of Jesus, or the stepfather of Jesus, ever said, and that word was Jesus. I mean, if you was just going to say one thing, what better word would there be to say than to say the name of Jesus? I'm glad at the name of Jesus, a hell trembles. I'm glad at the name of Jesus, a sinners can bow and find that there's a Savior. I'm glad there's still power in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's not part of the message. It won't cost you anything. His, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now look in verse 39. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the next little while, I pray, God, that you'd help us. God, help us to share uh, what you put in our heart. I pray, God, that it'd be a help and encouragement and blessing to your people. And God, may we receive uh, what you have for us here in this place and here in this hour. We bless you and we love you. We ask these things in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. <clears throat> This morning, you may be seated. I uh, ran across something as I was preparing 
and I thought that it might be a help to you, an encouragement to you. It's called the uh, the month after. Twas the month after Christmas. Twas the month after Christmas, and all through the house, nothing would fit me, not even a blouse. The cookies I nibbled, the fudge I did taste, all the holiday parties had gone to my waist. When I got on the scales, there arose such a number. When I walked to the store, less a walk, more like a lumber. I remembered the marvelous meals I'd prepared, the gravies and sauces, and beef medium rare. The pies and the cakes, the bread and the cheese, and the way I never said, no thank you, please. As I dressed myself in my husband's old shirt and prepared once again to do battle with dirt, I said to myself, as I only can, you can't spend the winter disguised as a man. <laughs> so away with the last of the sour cream dip, get rid of the fruit cake, every cracker and chip. Every last bit of food that I like must be banished till all the additional ounces have vanished. I won't have a cookie, not even a lick. I won't, I won't only to chew on a long celery stick. <laughs> I won't have hot biscuits or cornbread or pie. I'll munch on carrot and quietly cry. I'm hungry, I'm lonesome, and life is a bore. But isn't that what January is for? <laughs> Unable to giggle, no longer a riot. Happy New Year to all, and to all a good diet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when Christmas is past? What do you do when you've lost the one? What do you do when it's no longer parties and fun? What do you do when all the gifts are gone? When the visitors have gone home and the decorations have been put away. We'll preach a little while this morning on when Christmas is over. When Christmas is over. <clears throat> I, I read this statement and it spoke to my heart. It said this, when the signs are no longer visible, does that mean that the significance is no longer valuable? When the signs are no longer visible, does that mean that the significance is no longer valuable? As we uh, consider this thought, I got to thinking about Mary. And I got to thinking about all that they, all that had transpired uh, in their life and the uh, events uh, that have taken place uh, with the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the announcement with all that takes place, it starts in Luke chapter 1 as the angel comes to her. All the excitement that no doubt is there. And as uh, those days go and the days wane, finally uh, the day is there and Jesus is born. And then, as we've read through our text, uh, eight days later, uh, he's circumcised according to the law. And then, according to the law, 40 days later, uh, they go to the temple to present him uh, to the priest. And uh, now it's back to life as usual. Now it's back to the humdrum and the mundane. I, I suppose if I were Joseph and if I were Mary, <coughs> I would think that there would be some adrenaline uh, no doubt the Spirit of God was present. No doubt the Spirit of God was active as all this was transpiring. Man, they are on the mountaintop with all this happening. The angels show up. Nobody's ever seen a sky full of angels before making an announcement like that. And the shepherds come. They fall. And all this is happening but now all this is over and it's time to go back home where everybody knows you and there's going to be a lot of questions. What do you do after? I know there's an epidemic in our world, in our time, that after 
Christmas. Uh, there, I done, I, I, I done some st uh, study on this a while back. I don't have the statistics with me today, but the um, the rates of suicide go up in January because people have just crashed after all that. After everything that's gone on, overspending, all the, everything that's with all of it. <coughs> People just don't feel like they have anything to live for. Can I tell you this? That God is certainly God on the high days. He's certainly God on the banner days of our life. But I'm thankful that God is God in the mundane. God is God down in the valley. God is God down in the low places of life. Brother Ronnie, if God was only God on the mountain, we'd only get a glimpse of him every once in a while. Just occasionally, we'd get to see him, but I'm glad, hallelujah, I'm glad he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. I'm glad, hallelujah, in the low places of life. I'm glad we've got a God that'll be there <coughs> Let's, uh, let me try to preach this before <coughs> we all end up at the hospital. <laughs> <coughs> when Christmas is over, look there in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 39. Luke chapter 2 and verse 39 said, <coughs> And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city. When Christmas is over, stay where he placed you. Stay where he placed you. After all the fanfare, after everything that had transpired, after everything that had gone on, guess what they did? They went back to life as usual. They went back to where uh, that they were before. They went back to everything that God had told them do, to do before. I, I, I've told people this counseling many times, uh, and I'll share it again this morning. If you don't know what to do, uh, do the last thing God told you to do until God tells you to do something else. Right. If you don't have direction, if you don't know where you're supposed to go, you don't know what you're supposed to do, get back to doing the last thing God told you to do. And whenever it's time to do something else, he'll tell you it's time to do something else. <coughs> I uh, was talking to a friend of mine recently. He's telling me about a, a guy that he used to go to church with him at another church. And he said, uh, I was talking, he's told me about this guy before. And uh, I asked him, I said, so is he still going to church over, over at that place? And he said, yeah, he's still there. And uh, he said, he said he got saved <coughs> out in the woods. Uh, somebody had led him to the Lord. And um, I don't know how he ended up at this church, uh, but he ended up at that church. And Brother Ronnie, he said, uh, I knew I needed to be baptized. And just so happened, I showed up that Sunday and they was having baptism service. And I, I followed the Lord in baptism later on. And he said, I, I just stood, I've stayed there. And I've st stood where God wanted me to be. And I've never left that place. And I'm still there because God hadn't told me to go anywhere else. Thank God for some people like that. Amen. Thank God for some people that just get a word from God. You know, I love high time. I love camp meeting. I love tent revival. I love all that kind of stuff. But give me some Christians that will get a hold of God. And they don't have to have the evangelists come in. They don't have to have the guest singers coming in. They don't have to have everything going on. They just finally have to listen and hear from God and say, God, I'll do what you told me to do. I'll be faithful in what you told me to be faithful in. I'll finish my <coughs> course. I'll do what you've asked me to do. <coughs> Stay where he placed you. Some of you is telling you, me right now, preacher, you need to stay <laughs> where he placed you. <coughs> Verse 40 said, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace.
grace of God was upon him. Now, when Je <coughs> the very Son of God was nurtured, the very Son of God was encouraged, the very Son of God was blessed because of the parents that God gave them did what God wanted them to do. Right. You ever thought about that? What if, what if our obedience, now I'm, not, I'm saying this rhetorically uh, because I believe it's true and I believe it's so. What if our obedience mattered so much that God was going to lead people, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'll take a drink this time. I don't generally do this, y'all. Amen. <clears throat> what if our obedience, what if uh, the people behind us, the people surrounding us, the people that we influence and we affect, what if uh, our obedience to do what God wanted us to do had made a difference in their life? I believe it does. I believe that it's God's will uh, for every person to find uh, what his will is for them uh, and do that until God tells them to do something else. Uh, until God tells them, and not until your friends leave, uh, not until your feelings get hurt, uh, not until you get tired of it, not until you get bored with it. Y'all just need to go ahead and go to church with me just a little while. Not until uh, things just ain't going like they were one time. Man, when I first went there, it seemed like God spoke to my soul every day. It seemed like every time I sat down, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. It seems like it's been a long time since that's happened in my life. Could it be? <coughs> could it be? I know people don't ever believe this. But could it be the reason you're not feeling it like you used to feel it. It's because it might be something wrong inside of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's so easy to point our fingers and blame everybody else. Well, man, I ain't felt this way in a long time. God hadn't moved. I ain't seen God do nothing. Could it be? God's waiting on us to get right. God's waiting on us. God's calling us. Man, it's so easy to point our finger and say, oh man, brother so-and-so, he needs to get right with God. I tell you what, sister so-and-so, she got an attitude. She got bitterness in her heart. She got all this stuff going on. Ain't it funny how we can poke and point out all the problems of everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. But we don't ever look in the mirror and see. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> When Christmas is over, you know, we've got to learn to stay where he placed us. <clears throat> Let me ask you this. What's the last thing God told you to do? What's the last thing you know without a shadow of a doubt? God told me I'm supposed to be doing this. Are you doing it? Are you faithful in fulfilling what God had put in your heart to do? Well, preacher... I used to, and man, I got tired, and I got weary. I got burnt out on it. I know you can, but that don't, that's no excuse. If God told you to do it, and God told me to do it, we ought to be doing it. Amen. <laughs> I know. That ain't, that ain't Sunday after Christmas preaching right there. Uh, let's see here. Number two. <clears throat> Look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Now, it was expedient for him, for Joseph, to go where God was calling him to go. Go where he points you. I said we ought to stay where he places us until we go where he points us. Amen. You know the story. He went, God 
sends an angel to wake up Joseph in the middle of the night <coughs> after that the wise men have came and tells he tells them go back another way Herod's got, got issues and Herod's going to be after him and he goes and tells Joseph you need to take Jesus and get him out of here go down to Egypt now we all know this because if you read, you read through these t uh, two chapters it was a prophecy that was given years and years and years before out of Egypt I'd call my son and God will fulfill every jot and every tittle of his Amen. word there won't be anything that's not fulfilled that God said is going to happen. It will happen. You read the back of this book, and I, I'm going to hallelujah. It's, it's as up to date as tomorrow's newspaper. Uh, everything that God said is going to happen will happen. And that God has it all planned out. God has it all figured out. Some of us worry about all this stuff. We worry about the Antichrist. We worry about taking the mark and all that stuff. I'm just worried about listening to the Hallelujah. I'm listening for that trumpet sound. I'm listening for him to uh, make that call. I, I'm going to get out of here one day. I hope you're going with me. <clears throat> so, Joseph does what God wants him to do. He goes where God points him. What do you do when the fanfare has left? When all the presents have broken, the batteries have run out, <clears throat> all the Christmas wrappings and tinsel and toys are all put away. It's back to the humdrum, the mundane of life. It's January. Bills are coming in. What do you do? You go where God points you. You listen to the voice of God. God, what am I to do? Remember in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 6, we all know this verse where Isaiah hears the Lord and and he said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. <clears throat> Chapters 1 through 5. Isaiah is pretty uh, harsh in his pronouncements. He's woe unto this one and woe unto that one and woe unto everybody. But in chapter number 6, when he sees thy Lord high and lifted up, if we ever, see, if we ever get God in the place he's supposed to be, We'll, we'll find ourselves, we'll, we'll see ourselves how we're supposed to see ourselves. Isaiah said, Woe is me, Lord, for I am a man of unclean lips. The angel of the Lord comes and puts the coal in his mouth. Then he can speak the word of the Lord. Then he's ready to go. Then he says those uh, famous words, Lord, here am I, Lord, send me. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to do what you'd have me to do. <coughs> Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. <clears throat> We've got to get to the place that we're listening to the voice of God. We're hearing what God would have for us. We want for what God wants for us. Hey, I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, that God is still speaking. And God is still calling. And God's still looking for some people to do his will and to do his work. <clears throat> and to do what he would have us to do. Amen. Whenever... John's disciples are having a problem. <clears throat> John himself having a problem believing that this really is the Messiah. He, Jesus sends word back to John and says, the blind receive their sight again. The ear, the deaf hear. The poor have the gospel preached to them. I am who I said I was. Can I say this? In 2020 next year, next week, in 2020, if we're going to be the church of the living God, we're going to be the church filled with the power of God. We've got to be busy and faithful doing what God has called us to do. We've got to go where God would have us to go. We've got to uh, be who God would have us to be. We've got to say uh, what God would have us to say. Matthew 28, he said, Go ye therefore into all nations and uh, uh, preach uh, the gospel to them, teaching them uh, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, I, 
I'm afraid uh, that in 2019 uh, and 2020, uh, we've made up our mind uh, that we're more uh, uh, comfortable being a country club, uh, we're more comfortable being a hotel than we are being a hospital, than we are being a place uh, that's going out uh, and getting broken, lost people, and bringing them uh, to the hospital of hope, uh, bringing them uh, to the altar that they can get born again and changed for the power of God. <coughs> the preacher's supposed to do that. Missionaries are supposed to do that. Somebody else is supposed to do that. No, we are supposed to do that. The moment we stop doing that, we are not fulfilling Christ's commission. We are not being the church that Jesus bled and died for. If we're going to have God's hand on us, if we're going to see God's blessing on us, we need to be about doing what God has told us to do. Amen. I uh, go where he points you. <clears throat> when uh, I've told this story and variations of the story, but when I went off to Bible college, I had a strong burden I had a, a want to, I had a desire to go and preach the gospel. There's a, a verse over in the book of Romans chapter 15, verse 20, I believe it is, 20, 21. It says, Paul said, I strive to preach not where another man has preached, but I want to go and preach uh, and, and um, not build on somebody else's foundation. I want to go preach the gospel. And man, I had a desire. I thought for sure I was going to Southern Oregon to do that. And through a series of events, God showed me otherwise. And God sent me here. I thought, last thing in the world Gaston County needs is another church. There's churches on every corner. And I found out, whenever I got to really praying about it, there's not a lot of good churches in our county. There's people that live within a stone's throw of where we are right now that have still never even stepped foot in the house of God. I'll never forget we had a we had this boy several years back. He lived over not very far from here. He rode his bike here sometimes. And uh, until he had come with a friend, he had never been to church in his life when he was a teenager. I thought, we're in the buckle of the Bible Belt. Nobody, nobody does that. That was his, that was his story. I've never, I've never been to church. That old boy got saved, and he brought, whenever the van wouldn't pick him up, or his mom, dad, whatever, wouldn't bring him, I got a picture of his little bike sitting in a parking space spot out there. I got to thinking, what if, what if I, I mean, I'm not saying anything's great about me, but what if I wouldn't listen to what about some of the people that we've seen saved? What if I would to listen to God? What, if, what about those right there? What about that little girl back there? Would they have ever come to know the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't know. <laughs> the preacher, I sure am glad that I listened to him. I sure am glad I went when he said to go. I promise you, there were many, a many a Sunday riding back down that road, going down the lonely 77 from here to Columbia in the, in the evening on Sunday night could be awful lonely. Sometimes the devil would jump in and he'd ride all the way back with us. What are you doing? Wasting your time? Wasting your life? What are you doing up there? That nobody cares. Nobody's coming. I, uh, you ought to just give up. There's other opportunities. You can go do something else. You can do something bigger. You can do something better. But I'm glad. I'm glad I listened to God. I, I'm glad I stayed with God. I, I'm glad that I went where God told me to go. <laughs> when Christmas is over, when all the tinsel and the toys and all that's been put away. Just go where he points you. Stay where he places you. 
<coughs> look, uh, look at verse 22. Verse 22 said, <coughs> But when he heard that Archippus did reign in Judea in the, uh, the room of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Of course, we know the story here. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that might be fulfilled, which is spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Again, God had a purpose. God had a plan. God knew exactly what he's going to do. Here's the last one. <coughs> When Christmas is over, do what he purposes. Look at back in Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. I'll share this with you here. If I can find my notes. Uh, the uh, what hap what's happened here in Matthew chapter 2, the wise men came, they gave the gifts. <clears throat> they went to Egypt. Some people believe that they were only in Egypt about three or four months <clears throat> when God killed Herod. He said Herod died. Uh, many people believe that Herod died under the judgment of God for killing all those innocent children. It's a sad day that we're seeing the same thing happen since 1973 legally in our country uh, that children are being slaughtered. And we, we pray and we say, God bless America. I believe it's time for America to start blessing God again. It's time for us to stand up and do what's right and do the things that God would have us to do. I know it's not always expedient. I know everybody might not like it. It may not be politically correct, but I'm not very uh, concerned about being politically correct. I want to be biblically correct. I want to do uh, what God's told me to do, uh, regardless who cares about it, who will vote for it, who's going to promote it, who's going to pump it, who's going to prime it. I'm going to stand and I'm going to stay with God. <laughs> so here it dies. And in Egypt, <clears throat> they come back, go into Nazareth. Now, we read this verse in verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Of course, this is the same portion of scripture that begins the story where Jesus is 12 years old. After, and after several years there, they take him up to Jerusalem at 12 years old. And he goes into the temple and you know the rest of that story. But I believe with all my heart that God found some people that would be faithful. God found some people that would do what he told them to do. I can't even begin to imagine, Miss Midge, what the temple life and the talk and the gossip and the prayer requests and all of that must have been like for Joseph and Mary. Well, that boy don't even look like Joseph. He's a son of God, virgin mother. They just kept being faithful. They just kept doing what God told them to do. There wasn't always fanfare about it. There wasn't always somebody there to pack their bag. In fact, the best we can tell, they weren't rich. They weren't highly favored and blessed. Sometimes being blessed and highly favored don't look like what we thought it would look like. That's Mary. Everything that they went through, it didn't look like what she thought it would look like. But she was blessed and highly favored of God. <coughs> One thing that has resonated with me over the last few weeks, this month, has been this. We, you know, you try to do your best for your children, try to do your best for your family, give them gifts and tell them you appreciate them, you love them, things like that. In some years, you can do better more than you can others. But especially, I suppose, in the years you can't. You often remind them. That it's not really about those gifts anyway. It's that we have another year that we get to enjoy each other. Amen. 
God gave me my family. God gave my family this morning. And I thank you for all these that my uncle, his birthday was not too long ago. And uh, I called him, let him know, tell him happy birthday, whatever. And he said, I hope you have to do the same thing next year. <laughs> and you know, sometimes I think we get looking at everything else and we forget the mundane of it all. Man, the people are coming in. We're going to get to see cousin so and so, uncle so and so, man. Hey, such and such. I can't wait to see them. But God gives us a whole lot of people we see all the time. And the blessing, I believe, many times is in the mundane of life. That person that you're going to go home with today, that's going to get on your nerves. They're going to act a certain way. They're going to do a certain thing. And you know they're going to do it because they do it all the time. And it gets on your last nerves and get under your skin. Yeah. What if they wasn't there? <clears throat> what if all of a sudden it wasn't happening anymore? What if they couldn't anymore? I can't stand the way they come and shuffle their feet and make, make racket. What if they couldn't shuffle? God help us when it's all over to look around and see the good things God has given us, the great things God has given us. <coughs> so that's good. Thank you. I'll share this. I'll be done. We've lost the one. <coughs> this season. Is a time that a lot of folk will get tired, get discouraged, get depressed. But I would encourage you, when you think you've lost the one, when you think that, you know, I couldn't wait for it to get here and now it's gone, what am I going to do now? Take time. To look at what God has given. Take time to look at what God has given. Take time to look at what God is doing. For example, how many of you over the last year or couple of years would have ever dreamed that God would do and that you've seen come to pass in your life over the last year or so? It's easy, Miss Fraley. <clears throat> when, you, when you're there with your leg and your hip hurt, you can't go like you, you wanted to go. <clears throat> it's easy to think, I'll be stuck like this. This is never going to get done and I'll never be past this. You might not be 100%, but you're a whole lot better than you was, ain't you? God's done a whole lot. <clears throat> when you're sitting there, Miss Mary, the doctor comes out and says it's worse than we thought it was. And all of a sudden, the weight of it all comes down on you. And they tell you it's not looking like he'll get to be back like he was. But hallelujah, when you're pulling out of the yard, heading up the road, doing what they said you might not be able to do. It might be a sneaky job you got to work at night, but it's a job you prayed for. It's something that God done for you. I hate that job. i got to go back to work this week. I've been off all week. i got to go back to it this week. Well, if you didn't have something to go back to, God has been good to everyone. I want you to stand with me. I want you for us to come and gather up these altars. Say, God, even when, especially when I've lost the wonder of it all, God, I want to come and tell you, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you that even though Christmas has passed, all the excitement and all the fanfare and all that's gone, I'm thankful that, God, I, I opened my eyes 
this morning. I might not open the gift, but I opened my eyes. Lord, I was able to walk this morning. God, I was able to call my loved ones, see my Jesus name. 